So chicken tenders you've been asking for. Easy, delicious, crispy, crunchy, juicy, all those things, gluten-free, low carb. I've seen spicy. I've seen all these different requests. So I'm gonna do them all right here, right now in this one video and keep it concise and keep it as easy as possible. We're gonna do chicken tenders three different ways. Now these are the ways that I always do chicken tenders. Now let's get going. I'm gonna show you how I make three different kinds. I'm gonna make spicy, crunchy buffalo chicken tenders. I'm also going to make gluten-free, low carb, crunchy, juicy, chicken tenders. I'm also going to make beer battered chicken tenders. Now, if you haven't had them, or if you have had them, let me know in the comments below. And if you like the beer batter, now which ones are your favorite chicken tenders? I wanna know down in the comments below because there are thousands of ways to make chicken tenders, to make fried chicken, to make Korean fried chicken, to make Southern fried chicken. There's just so many different types of fried chicken and I love them all, they're just so delicious. These are the ones that I'm gonna make for you today. I hope you give them a try. If you do, make sure you send me pictures to my Facebook and Instagram accounts so I can share them on my YouTube community page. I love doing that and I love seeing your interaction on that. It is so much fun. Oh, and I've got a bonus for you. I'm also going to show you how to make your own ranch dressing and my own buffalo sauce that goes with this. So you're going to get both of those sauces to go for dipping and for spiciness. All right. Everything will be timestamped below. So if you want to fast forward to your favorite part or to what you want to see, feel free to do that. Well, let's get going. So for the homemade ranch, this is what you're going to need. You're gonna want a quarter cup of buttermilk. You want some mayonnaise, and you're gonna want one cup of that. You're gonna want a half a cup of sour cream. You're gonna want a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of dried parsley. And if you wanna add a little spice, you want a little pinch of cayenne pepper. Now, a couple other things that you're going to want is dill. Now, you can also do a teaspoon of dried dill if you want to, but I've found with the ranch that I like the most, it has fresh dill in it. And honestly, dried dill is one of those dried herbs that I find myself never really using, so I don't mind buying some fresh dill when I wanna go make some homemade ranch. And this is totally optional, but since we had chives growing in the garden, I'm gonna add chives to our ranch today. It's just gonna add a little sweetness to it. All right, so we just need a little, about a teaspoon of the dry, of the fresh dill. So you're just going to chop. Again, remember when we talked about the claw, using your middle finger as a guide? So. But there's about a teaspoon right there. Depending on how much ranch you want to have on hand, feel free to add more. We're gonna take our fresh chives, just fold them in half so they're a little easier to handle. That should be about good. We're gonna add a cup, half a cup of sour cream, and your quarter cup of buttermilk. Add our chives, let's add our dill. Let's give that a stir first. And then depending on the thickness and the consistency that you like your ranch to be, you can add more mayo and sour cream if you like it to be a little thicker. If you like it to be a little runnier, just add a little bit more buttermilk and just kind of play. All right, let's add our other dry spices. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and a full teaspoon of dried parsley, and a pinch of cayenne. Before we add salt and pepper, I'm gonna taste it. Mmm, it's looking beautiful. That is a great consistency right there. It is nice and tangy. Now I'm gonna go some coarse black pepper. Probably about 25 cranks. And one big pinch, two big pinches of salt. Now that's really the thickness that I love. The wife says it's perfect, now cover it up and put it in the fridge until our chicken's ready. And if you wanna add a little tang to your ranch, add a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning too. That's a nice little tip to spice it up a bit. Okay, now for the buffalo sauce. I'm just making a little bit because my son's only gonna be the one that eats these and I'm just gonna do a little taste test to make sure that it's great, okay? For you in the video. Feel free to double, triple, quadruple this recipe depending on how many you are making. Now, it is not buffalo sauce unless it's got Frank's original Red Hot in it. And if it doesn't have butter in it, then it's also not buffalo sauce. You gotta have the combination of Frank's and butter. You're also gonna want garlic powder onion powder, black pepper, salt, smoked paprika, red pepper flakes, chili powder, and last but not least, oregano. This is my dad's buffalo wing sauce. Now we call him Buttery Rick. You may have seen him in a couple episodes in the past. There's also the wing recipe that is, in my humble opinion, the best wing sauce that I've ever tasted on chicken wings, and you gotta grill them, right? 
whole nother topic for a whole nother episode, or you can watch some previous episodes of mine. It's the right amount of spice and it will kick, but it's that kind of spice that after you're done eating, it doesn't stay and burn your face. Give this a try. You're going to like this recipe. It's so simple. You just, we're just going to throw it on the stove. Let's get going. Okay. Now, since we're just making this small amount, here's how much you need. You need a half teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, parsley, and chili powder. You want a quarter teaspoon each of red pepper flake and smoked paprika. Now, if you can't find smoked paprika, just go with regular paprika, or if you don't like the smokiness, go with regular paprika. And for the salt, I've got two big pinches of salt. Add in a whole bottle of Frank's. Now this is the five ounce bottle. And like I said, just double, triple, or quadruple, depending on how much you're making. Turn your pan on to medium low heat, add your butter, and wait for that to melt. I almost forgot to tell you guys, you're gonna want a couple splashes of Worcestershire. Worcestershire. There we go, that's perfect. Let that butter melt. When the butter melts, we'll add our spices. Go ahead and add all of our seasoning. And do you see that? What do we call that? Your, if you guessed particles of yum, you are right. I almost forgot the black pepper. I'd say 10 cranks. And there we go. There's our buffalo sauce. Now we want to let this cook until it starts to bubble. You see how it's starting to bubble? So we don't want to let it go too far, otherwise it'll start to separate, but just give it a little stir as it starts to bubble and then just pull it off the heat. Okay, now I've got chicken tenders. These are from Walmart. Now before we even get started with any of our batters or flour or anything like that, the prep is the same no matter what. I did mention in my last video about how handy these baking racks are, and here's another example of that. So if you don't have one, no problem. Just lay them on your cutting board. That'll be fine. But if you do want a rack, I'll link to it in the description below. Just take your chin chicken tenders, dry them off. There you go. Like I said, this is the same process no matter what type of batter I'm using. We're just going to season them with salt and pepper on both sides. Now that my chicken tenders are seasoned, now I want to get two plates. Now I'm using two plates just because I'm doing one with traditional all-purpose flour. If you're just doing traditional and you're not worried about low carb or gluten free or anything like that, just do about a half a cup of all-purpose flour on your plate. Now for my gluten free and low carb, I'm doing paleo flour. Okay, now I'm not concerned about the gluten touching the other stuff. That's not for that's not why I'm doing the gluten free. But if you are, make sure that if you're doing both, that the flour stays away from the gluten free side. So we're going to take our tender and just dredge it in the flour and set it back on the on the tray. And then you're just gonna set that in the fridge while we do get everything else ready. And just make sure you shake off the rest. Less is more in this kind of scenario because this will create a bond for our batters later. Okay, here's my gluten-free, same thing. We're just gonna dredge. Now the gluten-free stuff, the paleo is a little bit grainier. So you just do your best. And this is a pretty important step, especially for the gluten-free. And I've done it without doing this step and it just doesn't come out as good. Set all these in the fridge to, to stay cool and to cure up while we get our batters ready. I've got a cup of the gluten-free low carb flour. I've got a teaspoon of the baking powder, a little palm full of red pepper flake, a teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And you can absolutely mess with these values to see what you like the most. About a half a teaspoon of onion powder and about three quarters of a teaspoon of dried oregano about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. And just for fun, I'm gonna throw in a full teaspoon of Cajun Ranch wing dust from my buddies at Gordon's. All right, now you want a couple big pinches of salt. And I'm gonna go coarse black pepper. I would say maybe 20 to 25 cranks. And just whiskey together. All right, and there's our low carb flour. Set that aside. Now we're gonna make a sort of batter for our low carb gluten free. You want two eggs, pinch of salt, a few cranks of pepper, and whisk. Now you want it to whisk so that it comes right off your fork and not a lot of stuff hangs off of it, okay? Heavy cream. I would say about a cup, cup and a half. Yeah, that's the consistency we're looking for. To make them extra crispy and incredible, we are going to be grinding up pork rinds. So if we're gonna use a food processor to do this. Now, if you don't have a food processor, just get a brown paper bag and smash them inside the brown paper bag. If you don't have a food processor, I'd recommend you get one. They're cheap and they can be used for so many different things to speed up the processes that you do in the kitchen. You can see that's what we're looking for. It's like super crunchy, carb-free breadcrumb. You may not do regular ever again. 
That's the consistency we're looking for right there. Time for the beer batter. Even if you don't like this beer, get one that you like because that's all that matters with your beer batter. You're gonna want one cup of beer for your beer batter. You're gonna want a cup of all-purpose flour. You're gonna want a teaspoon of baking powder. Nice big pinch of salt, two pinches of salt, pepper. 20 cranks at least. The most important part is potato starch. You're gonna want a quarter cup for every one cup of flour. So 25% of your mix should be potato starch. And I've already got that in my dry mix with about a half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, nice big couple pinches of salt and some bunch of uh, ground black pepper. Let's go ahead and whisk in the dry mix first. I just pour like half a cup at a time. And I think we're gonna have to adjust our recipe on the fly here and add more beer. See how that is just a little too thick. We're gonna add another quarter cup. One little thing to help you out in the kitchen is while you're doing this and you're standing over your counter and you're mixing all of your ingredients together, you're cutting all your ingredients, those kind of things, make sure your shoulders are back because what happens since you're looking down, if you're hunching your back, you're going to get some very good back pain. So it's a really good idea to practice good posture. All right, that is beautiful. Okay, now for our batter for our normal chicken tenders. Not beer batter, not gluten-free, not low carb. We got a cup of all-purpose flour. And since lately we've been on, on a good run with, with Pecorino Romano cheese, we're just gonna do a nice big spoonful of Pecorino Romano. Again, a quarter cup of our potato starch, teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon to three quarters a teaspoon of garlic powder. Nice big pinch of salt. And let's make it two big pinches of salt. And at least 20 cranks of the pepper mill. Let's mix up the dry ingredients. I've actually never done this with Pecorino Romano in it, so we'll see how it does. All right, and now a cup of heavy cream again. Now you could use milk here if you wanted. Heavy cream is just so much better. Again, if it seems a little too dry, add a little bit more heavy cream. You can also use buttermilk here. Buttermilk is great, that's pretty traditional. That's a much better consistency right there. Okay, we're gonna do the beer battered first. Okay, remember that leftover flour we had before? Go ahead and get that back out. See how the, the flour has really like kind of soaked into the chicken here? We're gonna hit it with the flour one more time. Give it a nice good shake, then dunk into the beer batter. Take your time and just let it drip off as much as possible, okay? And I like to do a couple different coats, right? So back into the flour and then one more time into the beer batter. And wow, mama mia. And then set it on the rack. Okay, the gluten-free ones. Now, I've got my pork rinds. I've got my gluten-free breading, heavy cream, and egg mixture. Now, there are some crumbs in there because I was just making gluten-free, carb-free onion rings. Start with putting your chicken into the dry mix, into the wet, let it drip back into the dry, back into the heavy cream and egg mixture, and let it drip. Take your time with it, no need to rush. Now into the pork rind. <laughs> and there you have it. That is beautiness. Get back your all-purpose flour, your dry, give it a dredge, and into our heavy cream mixture. And this might be a little too thick, but I'm just gonna roll with it. This is a little like cake batter almost, but heck, I'm here, we're doing it. Back to the dry. Look at that. <laughs> okay. It does smell like wontons. <laughs> No, I'm not making wontons. I'm making chicken tenders, homemade chicken tenders. Beer batter right there up top. Our more traditional batter right, right there, the white. And we've got our gluten-free low carb. I've got my temperature of my oil at 375 degrees. We're gonna start with the beer batter and lay them away from you. And I like to just set them in all corners just to give them space. Now make sure you have a plate with a paper towel on it handy for when you pull these out of the oil. And you wanna have your salt handy as well. Now if you're deep frying, you don't have to worry about flipping, but after, if you're doing it this way with just a little bit of oil like I'm doing, a little bit more of a shallow fry, you wanna flip after about four minutes. Like that, that's already super crispy. All right, these are done. Put them on your plate and then hit them with a little finishing salt. And there's our beer batter. Lay them away from you. Oh, I can smell the cheese already. After four minutes, give them a flip. Oh, yes. Like that is just glory. That is power emanating from its edges. OK, 
Okay, and now the low carb, gluten free. About after four minutes, give them a flip. The pork rinds will cook real fast, so they'll end up a little bit of a darker color, but that's totally okay. We're not burning them. If you got kids running around, make sure they're not running anywhere near your oil. Now, if you're doing the buffalo style, I want you to take your chicken tenders, and we're just gonna paint them with our buffalo sauce. Now, you could just dunk them. Look at those, give them a clip. And now, I want you to have your broiler on high and stick them directly underneath your broiler. Now, if you don't want to do the buffalo with it and you just want to do that batter, that's exactly what it looks like with the cheese and the heavy cream. Super crispy, flaky almost, and just super tender and juicy. We'll cut into them in a minute. Here we go. That. I'm gonna let them cool. Broiling the sauce, just bake that sauce into that crispy coating and it is going to make it so much more rich. Extremely spicy, but delicious. Let's give these a try. First, we're gonna try, I'm gonna try the beer batter one first. There is the beer batter. A little bit of that homemade ranch. That's awesome, that is awesome. <laughs> Gluten-free, low-carb, pork rind breading. Mmm, oh, that's so crispy. It's so juicy and tender. Unbelievably juicy and tender. Gluten-free, low-carb. Wow. You have to prepare yourself for how rich and tasty that really is. Buffalo. Now these are still boiling lava hot. That's awesome. That is so tender. Incredible. And then here is what the buffalo ones look like before. My favorite is da, 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 the gluten-free, low-carb. These batters are wonderful. They're creamy, they're delicious, they're flaky, they're crispy, they're delicate, and most best of all, they don't come off. Look at that. They don't come off of the chicken tender. So you can do this and not have the type of breading that just falls off the chicken tender every time you go to eat it. And that sucks. You don't want that. So if you make any of these, be sure to send me your pictures on my Facebook page or my Instagram page. I wanna share them, I wanna celebrate you cooking in the kitchen, I wanna celebrate your successes. I appreciate you, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.